The obvious question is why would Paul choose to compare Jesus' physical appearance to that of a human being by using the word likeness if Jesus had actually lived a life as a human being? Wouldn't being a human necessitate looking like one? These descriptions by Paul not only ignore Jesus' humanity, but closely match the idea we saw in the Ascension of Isaiah, where Jesus descended through the heavens, taking on the likeness of a man as he descended, until he finally resembled a man in the lowest level of heaven. Again, the phrase, they will think he is flesh and a man, certainly seems to leave no doubt that he was not human. Paul tells us not once, but three different times in three different ways that Jesus merely looked human. It seems that many early Christians believed Jesus wasn't human at all, but a God who temporarily assumed the shape of a human, taking on a type of flesh and blood in order to undergo a sacrificial death in heaven at the hands of the demons. If the idea that Jesus was not human didn't begin to circulate until the Gospels gained wide acceptance starting around the middle of the second century, could this be why we never read in the epistles, the earliest Christian documents, of Jesus eating or drinking or doing anything having to do with being human? But we do see this in the writings of the Gospels and second century Christians. Could this be why we never see arguments among the early Christians of the first century about whether Jesus actually defecated, a very human activity? But believe it or not, we do see such discussion in the later Orthodox views of the second century, such as this explanation from St. Clement of Alexandria, written sometime in the late second century. He was continent, enduring all things. Jesus digested divinity. He ate and drank in a special way without excreting his solids. He had such a great capacity for continence that the nourishment within him was not corrupted, for he did not experience corruption. If Jesus was believed to be truly human, why did Paul say that Jesus was made in the likeness of men, instead of simply telling his readers that Jesus was the Son of God born of a virgin named Mary? That would surely have been a better approach than implying that Jesus only appeared to be human in shape and form. These declarations by Paul not once, but four different times, that Jesus took on the appearance of a man, combined with Paul's obsession for declaring mankind sinful at its very core due to the genetic link back to Adam, has to mean that Paul believed in a Jesus who was not an actual human being at all, but a God who had transformed into the shape, the likeness of a human, with a type of flesh that could undergo death in the lowest of the heavenly realms, in the perfect tabernacle not made with human hands. For Paul and the author of Hebrews, Jesus could not have been human, for it would have tainted his perfection by wrapping him with human sinful flesh and completely destroyed the dualistic design that Paul and the author of Hebrews so painstakingly established. As Paul tells us in Romans 8.3, Jesus took on the likeness of sinful flesh, but that was as far as he went. Although the flesh Jesus assumed at the end of his trip through the levels of heaven was not human, as we learned from the ascension of Isaiah, we did note before concerning the more ancient gods that predated Christianity that this heavenly flesh and blood could suffer pain and even death, all within the realm of the heavens. Thus, Jesus could destroy sin in the flesh without ever becoming an actual sinful human and having to set foot on earth. He was separated from sinners, as the author of Hebrews tells us, not only in character, but in existence and location, since he was not human and not affected by original sin, and since he had never been on earth, as both Hebrews 8, 4 and chapter 9 imply. From all that we've seen, it's clear that the early Christians believed in a Jesus who was not human at all. He merely took on the likeness of a human, the physical shape in order to undergo a physical death and become the once-for-all sacrifice for the sins of mankind, while not tainting himself with real human flesh. Also, Jesus had to resemble a man in order to disguise himself from the demons so that they would think he is flesh and a man and mistakenly kill the Son of God. This exonerates the Romans and Jews for the death of Jesus, since they normally did not crucify people just because they looked human. But the main point, I believe, is this. 
If Jesus was, in fact, a man, the need to compare Jesus' appearance to that of mankind would be superfluous. If he was a man, he'd necessarily look like a man, and the need to compare his appearance to that of a human would not exist. Now, there are three passages where Paul refers to Jesus as a man, the Greek word being anthropos. But don't jump ship yet. There's much to be examined regarding these references and They, along with the other exceptions, deserve closer inspection before drawing the conclusion that they nullify the Jesus myth theory, including all of the evidence we've already seen in this set of videos. These will be examined in future videos, but for now, just so you'll know, here are the verses.